I just wanted to make a quick video to show this um, this amazing patch here. I've um, been trying to grow this wild edible in my garden for three years now and I only succeeded to grow two plants. Every year I come and I collect seeds and um, I try to spread them around, see where they germinate or not. Anyways, this here, so I'm on the side of the road in this, in this county road. We don't spray anything here and uh, I'm going to show you this is show you some flowers here um, this is a uh, wild mustard and all these flowers will make pods and inside the pods there's going to be seeds from which um, we make mustard now the thing is this here this uh, mustard wild mustard plant is the ancestor of kale and it looks a little bit like kale see it's the ancestor of cabbage it's the ancestor of um, brussels sprouts wild mustard is the ancestor of broccoli of um, what is it I'm trying to say Swiss chard and um, I might be missing a few but this here this amazing plant was um, poked and prodded and zapped with UV rays and the seeds and then They've done all sorts of things and then they cross bred, cross pollinize and did all sorts of things to get to the um, broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower and all that and all the other. And then um, that's why I always find it funny when people say, oh, look, uh, this, this is heirloom kale or heirloom broccoli or air." as if this heirloom makes it um, makes it righteous like it makes it uh, natural or some something natural it's not it's all it's all like hybridized it's genetically modified because this is the ancestor this is the true genetics this is what creation nature made this is the original stock genetic stock everything else is a genetic modification of this right so you just play around with the definition of gmo you now they're telling us they they are going to give us a definition of gmo but don't be fooled okay so the thing is that this here grows still grows today and um you could eat the leaves you could eat the flowers they're absolutely good i'm going to eat some right now and Mmm, absolutely delicious. You could eat the pods. Oh, look, this one here has already gone to seed. So I get to show you um, some of the pods. You see, it's not like this cam, it's not zooming so well, but um, you could see right here the um, the pods. There's like maybe, I don't know, 10 seeds in there. Um. What else I want to say is um, the leaves. What this is what I do, okay? I take the leaves and I cook them like I would kale. But I've been lately. I've been playing around with uh, for wild fermentation. So I uh, I cut this up into small pieces and I I pack it in a uh, mason jar with salt and I push. I pack it real tight until the uh, the juice comes out of here and mixes with the salt and it makes a brine. And I, it's really packed tight, tight in there. It's, it's dark, dark green juice comes out. And then I let that ferment. So uh, like this is uh, soaking under water, under the, the salt water, under the brine. 
and I let it there on the counter uh, for like maybe uh, two weeks and it, and it has full of lactic acid it's kind of like making sauerkraut but sauerkraut with this wild genetics this amazing wild plant so this is an amazing um, small little patch here and I come back here every year <laughs> because I can't I'm not successful at growing it in my garden so um, yeah there you have it one more of those amazing wild edibles that uh, provide free nutrition and medicinal uh, qualities to it too. Okay, this is it.